We all know that every single large casino in Vegas has a huge vault in the underground. But did you know that the third best hospital in the world, the biggest hospital in Canada, Toronto General Hospital, also has an incredibly huge vault in the underground and we need to get into a maze to go to the vault? What goes on in this vault? Come with me, let's find answers. To uncover the secrets of the vaults, we have with us Dave, who is a medical scientific liaison. Dave, before we get into the vault, I see that there is this huge door which protects the vault. What is the door made of? We, How thick is it? That's a very good observation. We have all kinds of polyethylene in this door here. It's the same polyethylene that's coating the walls of the maze. So the thermal neutrons bounce around with the polyethylene. They bounce around these walls and have no energy left by the time they exit the facility. So we can operate and work outside the facility with no issues and it's safe for everyone. All right, so we have neutrons coming from inside the wall. That's exciting. So this is the vault. And this, this is the secret of the vault. So this is a cyclotron. But wait, what's a cyclotron? This is a particle accelerator where we can make radioisotopes. And those are incorporated into radioactive drugs or radiopharmaceuticals that we use in our hospital. We inject patients with them and they're imaged on our PET CT or our PET MRI uh, for indications uh, in cancer or heart disease. Um, and they help uh, diagnose and, and give therapy options for the patients. Okay, so cyclotrons are used to make radioisotopes. Uh, what are radioisotopes and what are they used for? Uh, we incorporate the radioisotopes. Usually we're making fluorine 18, gallium 68, copper 64. Typically a cyclotron makes these for diagnostic imaging radiopharmaceuticals. Um, so the protons are made first and then they bombard materials that make these fluorine 18, gallium 68, copper 64 isotopes on the targets. Then from the targets, um, they go into one of our processing hot cells in the facility where they're made up, they're incorporated into the radio pharmaceutical. Um, they have a manufacturing process and, and then we do quality control on them before they're released and injected into the patient. That is very interesting, but aren't uh, radio isotopes also used for therapy purposes as well? Yes, absolutely. Um, you Sometimes bigger cyclotrons, can, you need a higher energy to make some of those therapy isotopes, or they're made from reactors or Linux or, or other processes around the world as well. Okay, so this is a, a smaller cyclotron PLL. That's right. It's a hospital-based cyclotron. All right. And I'm assuming that this is not how it looks. This is the interior of a cyclotron? It's your lucky day. We've, uh, we have maintenance going on today, so we're able to open up the tank. Normally this is under vacuum, so all the particles don't hit each other and go nowhere. So we have this under vacuum. Uh, we have an ion source that's in the middle here where we have a hydrogen plasma that's formed. Oh, wow, okay. And from the plasma, we take the negative hydrogen ions, we extract them, and they, they're in a magnetic field and they get accelerated in this sort of rotation about 200 times, very fast. They get to about a tenth the speed of light after they do 200 revolutions. They hit a foil that extracts the electrons from the proton. They change direction and they turn up and hit one of the targets and they bombard the material. And then they start doing new nuclear reactions where that material bombards them and you make a PN reaction, it's called, and, and make those different radio isotopes. Wow, so I'm assuming that this area on a normal working day would be radioactive. It is. It is. Nobody is allowed in here when it's running, obviously, for safety concerns. Uh, and that is why we are wearing all these radiation dosimeters. Even though it is open, it's not running. We want to be incredibly safe. That's correct. That's correct. And I'm assuming that's why you hide it in a safe vault underground <laughs> the hospital. We have two meters of concrete all around this so that we can run this safely full tilt. Two that, meters of concrete. Two meters of concrete. Wow. That's correct. No one is breaking in here. <laughs> <laughs> So Dave, you said that the radioactive materials, they're created here and then they're taken to the hot cell. But how are they taken? Do you kind of carefully take them without dropping or does the transfer take place automatically? What happens? Uh, we actually, I'm going to show you, we automatically transfer things here. There's too much dose rate to manually transfer things. Uh, so I'm going to put on a pair of gloves and just show you a typical capsule that's radiated for our solid target. So here's a typical capsule. It would be pneumatically driven in through this line here. It sort of shifts into place here. And inside here, the beam would hit the center of this 
uh, target here. Um, so this gets irradiated. In this case, uh, for gallium-68, for instance, there will be uh, zinc-68, isotopically enriched material in there. The beam hits there, it does a PN reaction to form the gallium-68. Uh, uh, so from there, you'd irradiate, say, for an hour. Then this shuttle uh, pneumatically goes through here, goes underground, and pops up into one of our processing hot cells that has a couple inches thick of lead to protect everyone. The Zinc-68 is placed here for an hour, bombarded with protons, gets converted to gallium-68, and goes through one of these pneumatic tubes into a hot cell. What is a hot cell? What happens there? Well, to know more about it, Click here for the next video.